The COVID-19 Brazil variant yields to the Pfizer vaccine. That's actually a very important development because the Brazil variant will come to the United States, just like the South African variant, just like the UK variant. And the virus will continue to mutate. But the COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer retains its ability to neutralize the new, more contagious variants of the coronavirus. That's great news. Not sure about Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. I suspect scientists never get ahead of themselves. Journalists always get ahead of themselves. That they will be easily adapted, given that the Pfizer works. If they don't already work, they will be easily adapted. Uh, the bill is going to pass today. The big $1.9 trillion spending bill. Question is, who's going to get the money? And uh, the Wall Street Journal has a wonderful rundown of who's eligible. Basically, if you made $75,000 or less, either in 2019 or in 2020, you're going to get the maximum benefit. Or if you're a married couple and you made $150,000 or less, you're going to get the maximum benefit. Now, the IRS is going to send payments using the direct deposit information it has on file, or it will try and provide as many people as possible with these electronic payments. But if they don't have that information, they will send you paper checks or debit cards, uh, which may take a bit longer to arrive. Up to $5,400 per family, and it's actually going to be higher because of the $300 per kids for large family. Question you need to ask yourself. Did you make more money in 2019 or 2020? This isn't going to affect a lot of people, but if if you made $75,000 or less in 2019 and you made $80,000 or more in 2020, don't file in 2020. Get an extension. Let them use your 2019 returns. Get the most money. I'm all for people getting maximum economic validity. If you got if you made less in 2020, if you made 100000 in 2019, but you, you had a COVID-related stumble in 2020, file your 2020 returns as soon as possible. Now, they will eventually catch up with you and get you the money uh, if you've had the step down. But why wait? Get it filed, get the money. Big day on Wall Street yesterday. Tech shares bounced back with the biggest advance of the year. Uh, that's the Wall Street Journal headline, the... Financial Times reports that NASDAQ soars in relief rally. Don't know if it will carry through to today. We will wait and see. I know one stock that's not going to do well. One stock is going to do very bad. I don't even know if it's publicly traded. Uh, but I know that when I see this story, I sit up and take notice. Verkada, V-E-R-K-A-D-A. A group of hackers say they breached a massive trove of security camera data collected by Silicon Valley startup Verkata, gaining access to live feeds of 150,000 surveillance cameras inside of hospitals, companies, police departments, prisons, and schools. Companies whose footage was included is Tesla and psychiatric hospitals, women's health clinics. Oh, the psychological arm here is going to be terrible. Uh, in a video seen by Bloomberg, a Verkata camera inside the Florida hospital Halifax Health showed to be what appeared to be eight hospital staffers tackling a man and pinning him to a bed. Uh, Halifax Health is featured on Verkata's public-facing website in a case study entitled How Florida Healthcare Provider Easily Updated and Deployed a Scalable HIPAA Compliance Security System. Well... You've got to wonder whether or not the things that were saved were saved for a reason. That, that's a very bad day for Verkata and all of their clients. Bad day for the U.S. Navy. Good podcast yesterday by Congressman Jim Banks and my friend Jerry Hendricks, Captain Jerry Hendricks. Jim Banks on armed services, a Navy man, Captain Hendricks, a Navy captain. Captain Hendricks wrote the book. To provide and maintain, they had a great podcast yesterday talking about the Navy. Go find it. Then I see this U.S.-China relations story. Admiral says U.S. military losing its edge in the Indo-Pacific. The U.S. military is losing its edge in the Indo-Pacific as China rapidly expands its military in ways that suggest it is preparing for aggressive action. Admiral Phil Davidson, head of Indo-Pacific Command, said the military balance in the region was 
quote, becoming more unfavorable to the U.S. We are accumulating risk that may embolden China to do to unilaterally change the status quo before our forces may be able to deliver an effective response. That's not a good warning, but take it to heart. There's still Meghan and Harry and Oprah news. Buckingham Palace put out a statement that Harry and Meghan's racism claims will be taken very seriously. There's so much commentary in the British press. The Sussexes did their duty to Queen Oprah, according to Charles Moore. Uh, he's not so happy with when, Sari, when Harry met Meghan and Oprah. Philip Johnston, also in the Telegraph, Starmer, Keith Starmer, the leader of labor, playing a dangerous game by joining the attack on the monarchy. And it goes on and on. One, perhaps welcome, uh, after effect. You may not know this, but Sears Morgan, Piers Morgan Late of CNN, uh, he held on to that slot for a lot of years, despite the lowest ratings in the history of CNN, tying my low ratings in the history of MSNBC. But his audience is supposed to watch CNN. Piers Morgan threw a fit on television yesterday, reminding people of Dan Rather when Dan Rather walked off the set. It's the most unprofessional thing a broadcaster can do. Uh, I've seen broadcasters get under the desk during earthquakes, but I've now only seen two ever leave because they were angry. Piers Morgan is the second, cut number nine. 